This lovely looking creation is a brand new road bike from Temple Cycles and it features at its heart a Reynolds 853 frame and fork. Yes, that's right, no carbon fiber here, all steel all the way. So in this video, we'll go for the first ride and see how it performs and handles and go through the details on it as well. Now, I'm sure many of you have heard of Temple Cycles, but if you haven't, they launched around about seven years ago and are based in Bristol in the southwest of England. And they made their mark in the bicycle world by making lovely vintage style steel bikes from fixed wheel creations to transport and utility focused bikes. But then two years ago, they launched the Adventure Disc, an adventure gravel wide tide drop bar bike. And now we have this, the first pure road bike, a bike designed for going fast as it will show but also designed for that all-round versatility and four-season riding capability we want from bikes like this. So disc brakes, wide tire clearance, relaxed geometry, mounts for mud guards and luggage, so you can go touring, do sporties, ride it every day of the week. It's that sort of bike. And there are some lovely details to bring your attention to on this bike. I've already mentioned the Reynolds 853 frame, including the fork, which is something you rarely see these days. There are quite a few good steel bikes in the market right now, but very few with a steel fork like this, and it really suits the elegance of this frame. We even have a non-tapered one and an eighth inch steerer tube in the head tube here, which is something you rarely see. I think Ritchie is one of the few brands that do that, and it looks fantastic. Skinny steel fork, skinny head tube, and a skinny frame. Just the right proportions, it looks all in balance. On its launch, the company will just sell frame sets, but there are plans to bring complete bikes to the website in the future. So this is a demonstration build, a Shimano Ultegra group set, mechanical shifting, hydraulic disc brakes, and a very fast looking Hunter wheels. We also have a nice Thompson stem and seat post and a Brooks saddle. The weight for this bike as you see it, with the bottle cage, but no pedals, is 9.67 kilograms, which is pretty decent when you consider how heavy a steel fork is. But weight, of course, wasn't a focus for the company. They weren't trying to make a super lightweight road race bike here, after all. So this will only be a brief first ride, so I won't go into too much detail about the ride and handling of the bike. Just a real flavor of how it rides on so many roads I'm on today. And the weather is absolutely amazing, by the way. Scorching hot, perfect for riding bikes. Although probably a little bit too hot, but that aside, this bike is displaying an immense amount of smoothness from the fork to the frame to the brick saddle and the wide tires. The smoothness is the one thing that really hits you about this bike, which is no surprise. Steel is known for its smoothness. And it's been a long, long time since I've ridden a steel bike with a steel fork. Most of the time they put a carbon fork on for the weight savings, which is understandable. But my goodness, the way a steel fork rides, the sensation of smoothness, and bomb proofness is just incredible. Now I should add, I actually own a steel touring bike with a steel fork, which I bought some 15 years ago when I was living in London. And it's still one of the finest bikes I've ever owned. I don't ride anymore due to narrow tires and rim brakes, but this bike does remind me of that old bike. The crazy level of smoothness you get from a steel fork, is just hard to match from a carbon fork. But weight isn't everything, especially with a steel bike. And what you might lose in terms of weight, you definitely gain back in terms of comfort. And then all that durability, longevity, reliability you get from a steel frame and steel fork. So you're not a compromise. I haven't dug into the details of the geometry of the new bike yet, so I'm riding it pretty much blind. But my first impression is how relaxed the steering is. It's really super stable in a straight line. And when you turn it off the axis, it's very, very laid back. It's not a fast steering, super agile bike at all. And definitely more laid back than any so-called endurance bike. It's definitely cut from that kind of old school touring Audax model, where you want a super easy handling. So laid back, so when you're doing 300, 600 kilometer rides, it'll look after you. That slack steering, and steadfast handling definitely means it's a heat on the descents as well. Yes, carbon race bikes with their steep angles can be fun on the descents, but not in a way this bike can carry speed through the corners. 
I've only done a few descents so far, but it absolutely flies along. You feel like you can push your bike further and faster because the handling gives you that kind of extra bandwidth. You're not so engaged with a super snappy responsiveness of a carbon race bike. Very measured, very calm. Just what you want from this sort of bike. I most of you know I have a soft spot for steel bikes. I own a steel bike, ride on a regular basis. And I love the way it rides, the smoothness, the durability as well. And also the way it looks. And I love the way a bike looks. Been a long time since I've ridden a bike with a skinny head tube and a skinny fork, but it works. Yeah, it won't be as stiff as an out and out carbon race bike, but there's no flexy needle at all. You use an old bike journal cliche. The whole bike just feels very connected, nice and direct. There's no hint of flex really, although not really pushing it to its limits. Very short ride as I mentioned earlier. So who knew it? A skinny steering tube and skinny fork can still deliver good performance. So first ride impressions on the new bike are overwhelmingly positive, but a very brief ride I should add. It's definitely an exciting move for the company, expanding the model range into a new area for them, definitely a new market for them as well. And it's definitely a good thing for those of us in the market for a steel bike as well. A four season bike for winter riding with mud guards, summer order axes, touring with rack and panniers, or just summer riding, enjoying the sheer benefits of a steel frame and a steel fork as well. And adds to a, a list of bikes like Fairlight, Mason, Surly, and many others. So a good move from Temple. And if you want to find out more about this bike, then check out the website linked down below. Now, if you see some more reviews of steel bikes on the channel, check out the playlist up here. And don't forget to subscribe by hitting this button down here. But that's all for today. Thank you so much for watching. I'll see you again very soon.